This is Witchy Wit Podcast, Episode 7. Music! Stay tuned. Welcome to the Witchy Wit Podcast, where we look at life through a witchy lens. I'm Kimberlyn. I'm Leilani. At Witchy Wit, we explore current events, ideas, music and books, and experiences in ways that recognize energy and life in everybody and everything. We are both real witches. And we bring two real perspectives through the lens of our different ages, races, and backgrounds. With a healthy skepticism for what we have been told is true, our conversations are raw, candid, and vulnerable. Join us as we cast a spell to uncover what we each know is true in our intuitive, witchy selves. Welcome into our circle today. We are so grateful to have you all here listening with us and being a part of our conversation. Before we jump into our topic for today, which is music, music. or as Kimberlyn says, music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, I wanted to check in about what's going on outside mm-hmm. of our witchy wit realm. Mm-hmm. So I thought I'd start first. So um, what I was thinking about is the fact that in the United States, we don't have universal health care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> so here's why I'm thinking about that. Um, I have a I have a pretty significant spinal curvature mm-hmm. in my back, and as as our listeners may know, I love to dance and move. <laughs> um, I love to do partner acrobatics as well as I'm a competitive dancer where I travel around the country and dance as well as dance. You know, here, mm-hmm. well, not during COVID, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um, but uh, I get a. I get a treatment on my back done. It's an advanced form of like a chiropractic procedure where they rub and they they um, tear apart my fascia. It's like super painful, but it has literally changed my life because I couldn't stand for more than an hour. Like I have memories of being at um, West Coast Swing dance classes, which are an hour long, and I would have to sit. Like I would just mm. sit on the floor. Wow. In the yeah. middle of the dance floor, I would just sit down during class because they would teach, you know, and then we dance and then they teach. And while they're talking, I would just sit. So I, I would go, I eventually I found my way to this treatment because a a lot of other like more traditional chiropractic things like didn't help at all. And I was taking medication for it for pain medication and I didn't want to do that anymore. So eventually I found my way to this type of treatment, which I've been doing for about five years and it's totally revolutionized my life. Like I cry about it when I think about it, but it costs $200 per treatment and I get treated. I'm down to getting treated once every three months. I just got an email from my school district that was where I get my school, my uh, insurance through is my school district and it's covered now by my insurance. It's going to cost $35. Oh my treatment. gosh. That's wonderful. I am not joking. You, I'm sitting in my classroom. A, co- a coworker uh, saw the email, forwards it to me and I just start sobbing. I can only imagine. I can only imagine how, I mean, just hearing that. Yeah. 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 And because for you, it's almost life-saving it is um, treatment it's 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 quality of life Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. amazing so as i was crying like after i I kind of gathered it a little bit (laughs) (laughs) uh gathered myself up a little bit but then i just thought about all the people that you know like our friends who Mm -hmm. have like our friends who talk about what it means whenever um they lose their insulin like the they Mm -hmm. don't lose but like the the um, luggage company mm-hmm. like loses yes. their luggage when they yeah. fly somewhere, right? You know, right. and then like, what am I supposed to do about my, you know? Yeah, yeah. It just, I really was empathizing with how absurd it is that we live in this country and 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 there are people who live in a first world country who cannot take care of themselves because they cannot afford the health care. It's it it. I mean, it boggles the mind. I have friends from Canada, and they just. They just look at us like, what is wrong with you people? I know. And, and and why is it, what is so important that this is not important to you? Yeah. Yeah. And, and we are fortunate because we have health care yeah. and, and, and um, you were talking a little bit about people, uh, friends of yours who are teachers and their, their spouses or significant mm-hmm. others or freelancers or whatever, they can do that because someone's in a school district that has healthcare, right? Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And so, but I just, you know, I just think of people who don't or don't have really good healthcare. They just have a uh, catastrophic. catastrophic or, yeah. 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 So it's amazing. It's amazing that we, that that's not a priority for us. Agreed. And, well, we can, <laughs> we, we can talk more about See this. See our next, but... <laughs> our next like three hour long episode, problems with healthcare. <laughs> 
<laughs> indeed, indeed. Thank you so much mm-hmm. for listening. Oh, well, thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate uh, what's that. What's going on with you? Well, okay, so I'm going to talk about rom coms. <laughs> <laughs> I love how we don't plan it, but normally one of us does something like like hoods. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so one of the things that I've been doing this semester, uh, this semester because of Zoom, because of COVID and Zoom, is I, I get together with my students and we'll watch a film. And we all go to the to the university um, uh, um, um, digital delivery, and we'll all queue into the film, and then we open a Zoom chat room, <laughs> and then we get one, two, ready, go, and we all start the film at the same time, and then we chat. It's hysterical. I my students are so funny. I actually save the chat transcripts because they. I mean, I just there was there was one time where I literally was spitting tea over my laptop because of one of my kids. Anyway, um, but one of the things that we've noticed so in one of the classes is intro to film music. So we've seen a couple over the past semester. But one of the trends that we've noticed there's two actually I'd like to talk about in, and one is um, these. Um, how rom-coms, you know, really build a lot of unrealistic expectations. Um, you know, people think, okay, you can meet someone and three days later you you realize that they're your soulmate. Or I'm trying to think some of the other things. But there's a, also a darker, seamy underside of that. And, and, and part of that is this, you know, this idea that, um, there's and, and, and it's always done in this really quirky way where this woman doesn't really want to have anything to do with this guy and he just keeps persisting. Um, and, you know, and, and then, and at the end, you know, she realizes that he really loves her and all of that really just proves that he really loves her. Well, you know, one of the students noted, and we talked about this uh, quite a bit, is that if that were real life and that woman was your friend, you'd say, girl, walk away. The man is nuts. Right. But, um, I, you know, these rom-coms, they kind of built these, uh, these unrealistic expectations and they kind of also kind of make like the the easing you towards it's a slippery slope easing you towards a grape culture mm-hmm. right where no can mean a whole bunch of things but it doesn't always mean no right no just means yeah. pursue me more yeah exactly exactly <laughs> you know and, and to prove to me how you really really deserve me mm-hmm. right and and that builds a whole lot of things so there is that and then the other part is one of the other things that we noted is that how um there were so many uh, male leads who would um uh, they'd be involved with a woman and the and the woman wouldn't want to have anything to do with them. And they would blame it on the fact that she's a bitch or, you know, her friends talked her out of this or, you know, she's a snob or whatever. And like, it really is you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not a bitch. You just suck. <laughs> yeah. we, we watched Social Network and that was one where they were just, <laughs> they were just, Oh my, and you know, there, there's a whole lot going on in social network, but, but that was one of the things. And, and we noted that was the last film I think we saw. No, actually, no, the last, this is what, so we kind of noted it in social network. And then this past week, just, um, just to kind of, uh, uh, to give them a little bit more extra credit, but also, um, to just kind of break up the, um, exam week, we watched Beauty and the Beast. Because the music in that we you know that that's one of their films for their final exam. So I figured that was great. And, and, and Gaston is just that perfect example of the guy who just doesn't accept that, you know, you could be fabulous. He's not, but you could be fabulous. And if she doesn't want you, she doesn't want you for whatever reason, you know? Um, so so that was when the, the conversation was flying fast and furious over this animated Disney film. But it was it was really interesting to see kind of their, um, you know, the way they kind of like delved into the psycholo- psych- psychology of it. So it's pretty, it was, it was a lot of fun. And, and rom-coms, they're actually pretty fruitful um, opportunities for discussion. So this is a very exciting episode for me. Um, I'm I'm a musician and a musicologist. Um, I teach a number of different music history classes. I'm a music historian, and um, and so and, and my special my uh, area of specialization is 17th century sacred music. <laughs> written for Roman nuns. So, so really, really, really. So if you want to know anything about Roman nuns, I'm your girl. You're so cool. (laughs) I think you're so cool. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. But I, you know, just like any, like I I would imagine pretty much everyone else in the world, um, that's not my only area of interest. And, and I love, like you talk about the sacred thud thud. And I really like, I, I love to go dancing. And I, so I love dance music. I love anything that makes my body want to move. Um, Baroque music, Renaissance music. My favorite band in the freaking world is AFI, a post-hardcore punk band. I, I will go any, I've driven, um, you know, 14 hours to see a concert of theirs. So, um, 
a lot of diverse interests. And I, I suspect everyone has, um, you know, things that may not necessarily looking at them, you might not guess that that's one of their interests. But um, but this is this is where we're starting. What about with, with, with you? What are some so, of your interests? So um, I am the opposite. <laughs> I, <laughs> I really like music because I get to go to the club. <laughs> So our two different perspectives. <laughs> yes. Um, so I enjoy, I enjoy, um, obviously I really like energy raisings, mm-hmm, which is mm-hmm. like what I, I do a lot of magical work at dance clubs. Yes. Also going to like raves and other music festivals. And then also music is really important, of course, uh, in my the dancing I do for West Coast Swing. Uh, but it also brings in some diversity because uh, some of the artists that uh, I would I, I really connect with because of dancing and West Coast Swing. I wouldn't hear at mm-hmm, mm-hmm, a rave or I wouldn't mm-hmm. hear at my favorite mm-hmm. top 40 club. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. So I'd like, I thought maybe we could just throw out some names of some some of our, um, some of the musicians that kind of uh, maybe um, uh, when you're listening to them, you might have a moment where you're kind of in touch with your witchy self. Yes. Um, so I actually get that with AFI. That's one one group. Um, what What about you? I love that you love AFI so much. <laughs> um, one of the most, she's not necessarily my favorite artist, mm-hmm. but one of the artists that brings me the most spiritual experiences mm-hmm. consistently, who was on my mm-hmm. list when we mm-hmm. made a list, mm-hmm. Katy Perry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Totally. I'm trying to think of some others. So um, I there's, a, there's a, you know, there's some pagan ones, and we'll talk more about those. Um, uh, there's a, one called Sharon Knight, and she is incredible. I just, I, I love her music. Um, Another moment that I didn't expect, and I saw this video, and I, I just want, and I think I might have shown it to you a couple, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I watched that video over and over and over again. It's Carrie Underwood's um, next time uh, before he cheats, before he cheats. Oh my gosh, I love that because at the end of the video, she's just walking. She's like, she's very elemental. Like she's the um, busting out windows. There's wind blowing the whole bit, and she's like, I am not taking this anymore. Screw you. <laughs> So, um, that, so that's one. I just, you're you're I, also yeah. super elemental, I think. Yeah. I, well, My experience I, I, of you is you're I, elemental. I, I, yes, very much. I, that really resonates for me. So that power, um, any of any, any woman that's doing that kind of stuff musically, I'm, I'm her gal. So, yeah. Uh, like witchy for me, mm-hmm. the one that pops onto my mind the fastest is Suzanne Sterling. Oh yes, and we yeah. she's on Spotify. She actually mm-hmm. posted something today on her social media about okay. the number of times she's been like downloaded and mm-hmm. listened to on Spotify. And I love listening to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, because we've been in ritual space with her mm-hmm. consistently oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, over the years, like I and we did the apprenticeship mm-hmm. with her and someone else. Um, her voice just instantly takes oh me gosh. into oh my God. I, trance I, state. I, oh yeah, I can just listen to her CDs one right after the other, and and kind of trance on that kind mm-hmm. of you know that can be a ritual. You know, just that's one thing that I think <clears throat> uh, we might uh, both resonate with. Resonate with our <laughs> sorry um, is uh, the 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 fact that music for me can just take me there and and can keep me there. And I sometimes I don't even need the words; I can just have the music. Words are super important to me, mm-hmm. I think. I, and I even even I remember being younger, like in high school, mm-hmm. and I would say, like, did you hear the words of whatever mm-hmm. song mm-hmm. I heard mm-hmm. on my radio mm-hmm. on my, Ford, my 1990 Ford Explorer as I drove to <laughs> high school right, right. <laughs> on the radio station mm-hmm. that we're mm-hmm. in, like, they're in the Ozarks of Missouri. So it's like, nah, 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 <laughs> you know, as I'm driving. <laughs> Anyways, but, like, people, I think it's a lot of people don't listen to lyrics, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. lyrics are really important to me. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why mm-hmm. I have a degree in English. Yeah, well, they, it's like, yes. It's like musical ear. There you it's go. Musical words. Exactly. So. Well, and for me, it's a lot of it is the rhythm and the harmony. I love to harmonize, as you know. Um, and so when when um, one of the groups that um, I'm going to talk about is Delta Ray, and they are just known for that rich, full vocal harmony where it just, for me, it just kind of hits my heart and then it kind of expands and fills up a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so that, you know, that kind of stuff is really powerful for me. So as you stay tuned and listen to our conversation, just know you're you're getting, as always, two very different perspectives. I think a, an important part of our discussion might um, start with when did we first start noticing this this relationship that we have with music? Um, what about with you? So I noticed it. Uh, so I knew I was a witch. Mm-hmm. Kind of. I knew that there was this magical path for me. I hadn't yet embraced the title of witch, but I knew that I was on this magical path when I started my undergrad. Um, so like, you know, I'm 18-ish years old. A very, very green 
wet under the ear switch, right? But I also, that was also when I started going to dance clubs. And so this is like circa 2001, okay. just so mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. our listeners know. And so I'm, I'm 18. I'm, and I start going to this dance club. It's this teeny tiny. So I went, I went to college in the, it was called the Bible Belt. Mm-hmm. It's like in rural, like Ozarks of mm-hmm. Missouri. There's like this teeny tiny little gay club that's like the size of, my master bedroom, you know, it's like super small, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I'm, I'm there and I don't know what I'm doing. All I know is that it feels so right. And I'm dancing and Sandstorm comes on. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 Uh, Darude Sandstorm mm-hmm. comes on and I just start crying. And yeah. I remember, um, my teeth, my teeth dried mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. I was smiling so much. Mm-hmm. And I remember after, <laughs> after the song ended and I kind of collected myself, uh, I remember like my lips were sticking to my yeah. teeth wow. because they were so dry. Now, now looking back on it as a more experienced witch mm-hmm. who's not 18 years old, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, like that was energy raising that I was mm-hmm. connecting mm-hmm. with, you mm-hmm. know, um, and I think there's a lot of similarities between trance and EDM music and then like the trance oh, we yeah. do in circle. But that was a moment that I, I, without knowing it, plugged into something sacred. Right, right, and, yeah. um, and to this day, I still love. I love Sandstorm. It's been the ringtone mm-hmm. on my phone. Yes. Like it's my favorite song of all time. How cool. How cool. What about you? Um, I actually, this has nothing to do with witchiness, but it has to do with that feeling that now I know is me connecting to the divine. Um, was in church in, in, in Ma- at Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Newark, New Jersey, um, singing in a gospel choir as a, as in a, you know, a, the youth choir. And I just remember there was one point where um, we didn't do a whole lot of, because we're kids, we didn't do a whole lot of, ex- uh, and we didn't read music or anything like that. Well, the majority of us didn't. Um, we didn't do a whole lot of uh, really advanced harmony, but there was one point where it, like the altos would go, da, 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 and then the sopranos came in, ba, 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 and then the tenors like, woo, ah, woo, ah, and the bass was like, mm, bum, 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 and I lost my shit. I was I was singing and crying and <laughs> what makes it so funny is everyone saying, "Oh my god, she's she's uh I forget what the term is, but but it was like, she's saved, she's saved." And they pushed me up and that's when I joined the church. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't know. All I know was that it was a divine moment and yeah. I was in a, a church, so I guess, you know, I went up to the front and 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 you know, they do the they they called it was called an altar call and and I was up there and they were laying on hands and the whole bit. Who knew? Who knew? But now in like you say, looking back, I realized that that was the moment when I realized that music was was my in, was one of my ins to finding that 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 uh that connection to the divine and um and gospel music i mean it's it can be so trancy i mean you can like really lose your mind on it so so that was the moment for me what a beautiful story (laughs) also a little bit funny (laughs) like whoa i didn't know i'm like a super baptist right wow (laughs) oh no meanwhile the goddess is like psych (laughs) like okay it's gonna take her a while (laughs) So, so anyway, so, but I knew then and, and, you know, I played instruments and the whole bit. Um, and I think it was, um, oh, I'm trying to remember, um, I think it was actually some, uh, like some R and B stuff that I began to really realize that it didn't matter. Like you say, you're very much interested in the words. It was, it was the whole thing for me. Like I, it, um, I remember listening to it and it kind of pissed my mother off cause I was listening to it on a Sunday morning. And, yeah, yeah. Mm. But, um, but it was the same thing for me. It didn't matter whether it was a church song or a, an R and B song. It was that same connection for me to just, um, o- open up and, and, oh my gosh, it was incredible. So let's start with talking about just some pagan artists, some pagan musicians. And um, I mentioned Sharon um, Knight, and and you mentioned Suzanne Sterling, um, t- but there's tons and tons and tons of them. Um, and, and some of the ones that we're gonna mention, we're not, <clears throat> they have not necessarily identified that we can, that we can tell as uh, as uh, pagan, but they have a lot of pagan themes or Celtic themes often, you know, that that's kind of like a little bit of a marker there. Um, 
And so that that you know we're we're kind of putting them in that in that category, but they may not necessarily be pagan. So um, last at our last episode, I played a song by Emerald Rose, um, "Santa Claus is Pagan Too," and but there's tons and and there's some that might be c- considered crossovers, like Lorena McKinnett, um, who I'd listened to for a long time before I realized, you know, okay, this is this is really what I am. Um, wait, wait, wait! You listened to her for a long time before you realized. Yeah, that that. <laughs> I mean, you know, like people like Enya, Lorena McKinnon, oh all of them, you know, they, it, it, it satisfied a need. And I, mm-hmm. but you know, I was, I was a good church going girl. So I just think there should be like, you pull it up on your Spotify. I know this isn't like age appropriate. You pull it up on your Spotify and it's like, you're, I've noticed you're listening to Lorena McKinnon. Are you a witch? You might be a witch. <laughs> you might be a witch. And you're like, cancel. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, no, 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 no. Swipe, no, left swipe or whatever. Would you also like to listen to Enya? <laughs> But who knows? I was just thinking, oh, this is so peaceful. Yeah. So, so what are some of who are some of the pagan artists that you like? Uh, so, so we already mentioned Suzanne <coughs> Sterling, but mm-hmm. she's my she's my number one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the Kelly Kellyana. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, she has a song called Stonehenge, and oh, I know. I love that. I so you know like I've and I've heard a lot from other witchy teachers that. Once, you know, the stronger you or the, the longer you have a trance practice, mm-hmm. the uh, the easier it is to, to trance. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. and uh, and like the moment I listen to there's this particular song of hers called Stonehenge. Mm-hmm. And before she even sings, there's just this deep drum beat oh my God. and yes. like one drum beat. And I'm like. Ugh. Gone. I'm like on the floor. I'm just done. I'm just like, done. Okay, I'm ready. Right. <laughs> so there's a, a moment called transinduction mm-hmm. where you get the mind and the and the body and the spirit kind of starting to vibrate so that you can move someone into trance pretty quickly. And so for me, that that drum beat, like oh. boom, I'm I'm in, I'm inducted. <laughs> Arm induced, whatever the word. If someone wants to rob either of our houses, they just have to walk in with a very large drum and go boom, and then you and I are just like, uh-huh. okay, <laughs> they're like carrying out the couch over us. She's like, don't mind her. Like she's starting to start. A- boom, boom, one more. <laughs> but yes. the, the lyrics. So I'm going to say the <clears throat> lyrics to that song oh are very gosh. meaningful to me, and um, and there have been some times that I've been sick, mm-hmm. and I've just listened to that song or spoken the words of that song. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've even had the thought of um, if, if I get sick with COVID, like I, that's a song. That I'll is come like, and sing it to you. Yeah. Oh, I'll come oh my sing. gosh. Well, yes. I'll I'm come and sing it. <laughs> we're we're going to heal your ass. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kelliana and I. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, that's, it's so funny because I, I started learning that song. <clears throat> but it has a it, it uses it, they're talking about the mother like you know divine but um i was learning it and then my mother died and i couldn't sing it for a couple of years oh, yeah. you know so but i would love to be able to sing that that song again for for you for Aww. you yeah no that's a great um a great and and her other stuff as well it's mm-hmm. it's amazing mother help me mother heal me Please release me from all things worldly that do not serve me. Mother, love me. Within these stones, I feel the And then another artist that I've sung with my choir, who is it's it's a it's um, 
um, we belong to an interdenominational church, um, or uh, but uh, but none of them are witchy. Um, are is music by a group called Inanna, and they are incredible. It's you know again vocal harmony, so so we get to play around with with things like that. But they they you know they sing they sing about. Um, about uh, love and connection. They sing about, you know, finding, you know, what's what's your strength and being strong and being there for other people. And so to me, um, I'm assuming that they are because they're, they're, one of their CDs is called Skin and Bone. So, <laughs> but you, you, you know, you know what happens when you assume. So, so perhaps not. I do feel really lucky though, that in our circle, uh, since we, we are a very like uh, singing centered circle, mm-hmm. we sing a lot which is one of the reasons why it's so hard to be a part during yeah, COVID. Yeah. We're very ecstatic. We are. Okay. We're very ecstatic. Mm-hmm. And um, we sing a lot. And so, unfortunately, our singing a lot just turns into you being <laughs> unmuted and then all of the rest of us being muted. And then we all... So I, Zoom, you, see, yeah. you see, like, I don't know, all mm-hmm. of, like, a, a Brady Bunch of everyone's <laughs> faces as they sing in your voice, which is yeah. actually quite wonderful. So. Well, but the, yeah, but it is kind of strange. <laughs> it's, it's not what it used to it's be. It's surreal. It, yeah, yeah. It yeah. is. I'll, I do love listening mm-hmm. to you sing. Mm-hmm. But uh, it really helped to expose me to a lot of really great pagan-ish mm-hmm. artists, um, mm-hmm. which is, of course, our term, not theirs. Mm-hmm. Um, artists like Marie Summerwood. Oh, my gosh. Her, chan- her chants are just amazing. Yeah. And Abby Spinner mm-hmm. is another one. Mm-hmm. Yes, I've been doing a lot of her stuff just for my own enjoyment. Just like list, I created a Spotify playlist with her figuring prominently. So, yeah, it's it's just, it's just a just to for me right now. It's even more important because, like you say, we don't have our that connection. But having that music there, th- these are incredible musicians. I, we highly recommend all of the ones we've ne- we've named so far. We highly recommend you. Go to um, Apple Music or I whatever it's, is, is it Apple Music it, now? I have no idea. Okay, whatever it is, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm a Spotify, Spotify. girl right mm-hmm. now. So, um, but or a- Amazon Music, wherever you listen to your music and and explore some of these, and we'll try to remember to put some of their names in our um, social media. It's a, it's really great too if you're solitary or you're separated from your circle right now because mm-hmm. of COVID. Um, following them and uh, learning these songs because then you can um, sometimes we simplify them down to just mm-hmm. like a, a verse or a chorus mm-hmm. and then that's what we sing whenever we're in ritual or when we're preparing for ritual so it's just a great place to start and another one is if you look up reclaiming yes mm-hmm. they have a lot of really great songs mm-hmm. um and they're a they're a, a group that you and i have both practiced with and yes. some priestess training with yeah they're incredible incredible so let's talk about some non-pagan music so so you know we, we talk about this experience and 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 obviously um with pagan artists they're going to say a lot of the words that we might be familiar with and that sort of thing but i get these feelings like you say you could get these feelings i get these i i I can I can have the, make these connections with music that's not pagan as well, and um, and so I'd be interested in hearing some of the um, non-pagan musicians that you resonate with because of this. Yeah. Of so there's a there's a good number of them, but so I figured out at, when we were talking about this, I figured out the key. I have a, f- a formula for this. <laughs> um, so it's uh, minor key mm. plus vague spiritual reference. <laughs> equals Leilani has a spiritual experience. <laughs> I love how you put that. And in fact, it's so funny because so much of like a metal and um, and goth music, it's not even my, it's it's taking minor and it's going like even more ancient. And so it's more modal. Don't worry about the term. I, you're just you like can't my see my face because you're, but I have, my eyes are just big and I'm like, I don't know what you're saying. I'm, I'm telling you, I'll tell you what I tell my, my students. You don't need to know any of this, but I'm just, I just have to say it. Just but, go, just go but, girl, but just go. So they actually use music, music, music intervals that are ancient. And so that's probably, you know, that it pulls on a lot of um, different types of tropes that you might read that like uh, the association might build up some things for you. It's I, I just it feels like it's in my DNA. Mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. which it sounds like it really is. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, so like some uh, minor key artists are like Marion Hill, oh, which yes. you and I were talking uh, yes. when we weren't recording about. That's an artist that I was we were both introduced to mm-hmm. through West Coast Swing Dancing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh. Incredible. I I think that was the first um, uh, playlist that I started. Um, I think it was Amazon Music. I was playing with them for before I got to Spotify. And so I started saving her stuff. Yeah. And it pissed me off because they kept taking it off. <laughs> Because I had the free Amazon, so I said, "Screw this!" But yeah, incredible music, and 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 it makes 
music that makes me want to move my body and touches my heart and my mind, done, done. And, and her music does that. Definitely. And, mm -hmm. and like, I'll be, I, I, um, I aspect or I, I start like channeling the sacred when I dance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I have to be really mindful of that. Otherwise, I, 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 I yeah, we'll talk about that on our, on our um, Bad Witches episode. <laughs> I start aspecting on the dance floor and then I don't remember things. It's just And I sacred doesn't also doesn't follow uh, the rules of the dance. No, so. no. So, and later people are talking about you in the ladies. Yes. Room. They're like, what was she doing? I thought she was a certain level of dance. Anyways, yeah. but then they start, if man, if the right song comes on and they switch mm -hmm. and, and it's like a minor key song of Marianne Hill, I'm just like, pew! Yes, <laughs> just yes, exactly. <laughs> so tell me about um, your uh, your feelings about Katy Perry. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Katy Perry, I love her so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and she did have an episode uh, in her life where she did not respect consent. Mm -hmm. Um uh, and she kissed somebody who did not ask for it, mm -hmm. and that was not okay. So, like, while I am a Katy Perry fan, I am mm -hmm. not uh, an unconditional Katy Perry fan. And okay, so I gotcha. do recognize mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, but Katy Perry actually has visited Salem. Oh, cool. Which oh, is cool. evidence to me that I think she's a witch. <laughs> She may not say anything. I about don't know. It, but I don't know. I know. Mm -hmm, I know she was mm -hmm. a Christian artist before mm -hmm. she was a. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I don't know what a not Christian artist, but she has some. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call them secular. Now. Secular artist. Thank you. Thank you, music person. <laughs> um, but uh, so she has a song called "Dark Horse," which I super love, and I like. I have some of the lyrics written down. It's uh, "I knew you were. I knew you were going to come to me, and here you are. But you better choose carefully." Because I'm capable of anything and everything. Make me your Aphrodite. Make me your one and only, but don't make me your enemy. So you want to play with magic? Boy, you should know what you're falling for. I mean. Yeah. Yes. I know. Yes. And so I'm like, you know, cruising along. <laughs> now I'm, so now I'm not in my like 1990 Ford Explorer. <laughs> now I'm in my Honda Fit. <laughs> 2017. Because we've evolved. <laughs> right. 2017 Honda Fit. And I'm like, Katy Perry? Yeah. yeah. Aphrodite? Girl, I see you. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Oh my gosh. And um she did a um a, a performance of Dark Horse somewhere and I can't remember. I saw a bit of it on YouTube and I just thought, "Oh, girl." Yes, oh, the one where girl. she's in the freaking crystal ball. Oh, girl. Are you talking yeah, about the one yeah, where she's in the yeah, crystal ball yeah, yeah. and they pole dance on brooms? Um, <laughs> I know. I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So you know, it could be, it could be appropriation or whatever. <laughs> but I'm it, it. Whatever she did, she did. She hit just the right, um, the right uh, angle, and she did it in such a way that it worked for me. <laughs> Let's rage. Yeah. And yeah, I like that. I do think mm -hmm. it's funny though. I'm not very attracted to the um the poppy uh like California girls, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. the the stuff where she's like wearing the whipped cream bikini or whatever, <laughs> no, no. you know, like the cherries. Um <laughs> uh, like but I do love like uh my favorite song of hers is called Wide Awake and mm. she's in a labyrinth and she has purple hair and like bell sleeved um like oh, medieval. Oh, yes, I think I've seen it. Yes, yes, and, yes. And like mm -hmm. I saw that music video and um uh, she sends up a, 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 a signal flare from her heart chakra mm -hmm. for her inner child to join oh her. Oh my gosh. And I, and, but yes. like that music video was like, yeah, that's yeah. the Katy Perry that I really resonate with. Yes. So I, my, my favorite Katy Perry is Rise. Oh, oh that, you know. So good. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I've just, it just, the, the, 
it, it's uplifting, mm-hmm. but it's also very personal. Or I can make it personal. I can mm-hmm. make it about me. I, you know, I know she's singing for for a lot of people and making a lot of money. Um, but <laughs> I feel as if she's singing. She's singing my song for me, mm-hmm. um, probably better than I could ever do it myself. But I'm glad to have someone who who who, who I think sees me. <laughs> She, you saw her. She sees me. Katie, you don't know me, but I know you see me, Mrs. Perry. I know. I know you. 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 You've seen me. You've seen me. So, um. So yeah. So I that that song every time, and it's and again it's the same thing. It's like one note. It's like bum 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 bum. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So we might have to play a little little excerpt mm-hmm. of that one. So what about you? I tossed out Katy Perry. Like, what, mm-hmm. what's one that comes up for you? Oh my gosh. So um, I, Delta Ray. This this group. I heard them. So I, you know, back before Spotify, a lot of us learned about new bands. Well, in between MySpace <laughs> and Spotify, a lot of us learned about new bands at Austin City in, in, in Texas um, at Austin City Limits. This is a wonderful music festival. And um, and and so, you know, I I do a little research because I'm mm-hmm. a music historian. Before I go, I kind of plot, you know, because they, they, they usually have, I think, about um, between five and eight performances going on at the same time. There's different stages all over the place. And, and of course, there's food that has to be eaten, too. So you've got to plot that in your day, too. And um, and so I. I I looked them up and I, I listened to a little clip of them on either MySpace or YouTube. I can't remember now. And I um, thought, okay, that they might be nice. I'm going to go listen to them. Oh my God. So they, we actually played a little bit of their music uh, for our Samhain, um episode. But what caught me was, um, uh, hold my hand. Oh baby, it's a long way down to the bottom of the river. Oh, and they were just like stamping. When they did, it was uh-huh. just stamping and the one woman singing. I, again, just lo- I, before their set was over, I was on my phone on Amazon ordering the CD. <laughs> that was, okay, like I said, this was back in the day. Um, because it was so phenomenal. And I've seen them live, like, I'm maybe about four or five times now. And every show has been almost a transcendental experience for mm. me. They're incredible. They are, I, I, I think that the, the, so it's um, two brothers and a sister, and then they also have another singer. I've mentioned this, I think, on the Samhain episode. But the that sister, she's just she's she's witchy. <laughs> she may not be, but she's witchy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she may not she might not uh, present as witchy, but I mean I mean she may not a uh, uh, self. Um, like self actualizes witchy, but she that's definitely it, thank you. presents as witchy. Exactly. In our opinion. Exactly. In my in my opinion. Oh my gosh, she's incredible. And there's a number of songs in there. There's one called Fire that literally as I as I'm listening to it and singing along with it, I can like I feel like the candles, the flames get higher as we're singing because there's so much energy they're putting in there. They're invoking mm-hmm. fire. It's just amazing. So Delta Ray, they're they're my oh my gosh, they're just incredible. So if you fall and if you fall, hold my hand. Ooh, baby, it's a long way down to the bottom of the river. Hold my hand. Ooh, baby, it's a long way down, a long way down. The wolves will chase you by the pale moonlight. Drunk and driven by a terrible song, girl. Drive your son like a railroad spy. Into the water, let it fall in Monday. Make the water run. Let the river run dry. Hold my hand, ooh baby, it's a long way down to the bottom of the river. Hold my hand, ooh baby, it's a long way down, a long way down. Hold my hand, ooh baby, it's a long way, a long, long, long way. Hold my Okay, I have another one. Okay. Uh, so it's called, the song's name is Back to Life. Mm-hmm. And it's by Dub Vision and Afrojack. No, don't know them. Yes. 
<laughs> so this is definitely like EDM, yeah, yeah, yeah. techno house. Like this okay. is in my, mm-hmm. this wheelhouse of mine. Uh-huh. But so here's the reason why they're, so first of all, they're like trancey yeah. EDM. So uh, like to me, I get there and I feel the the thud thud, the holy mm-hmm. sacred thud mm-hmm. thud, <laughs> um, which is just like your drumming, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, like your drumming in ritual space is like, oh my God, like you. fast track to my heart. Well, thank you. So good. Um, but I, so I'm there and I hear it, but um, there's a, a line in the song, which is a line that we we have both uh, both sung, it, sung mm-hmm. in ritual space, mm-hmm. um, like in the Redwoods. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and it's been written into ritual intention for both of us a number of times. Oh, my gosh. But it's um, love is the law. Ugh. is I know. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of swaying from side to side. Yes. So the lyrics from the song are, your love is the law, so when I can't speak and life is breaking, when I feel too low, you bring me back to life. Um, I'm exploding out of my body because I have let go. You bring me back to life. Now, if I'm exploding because I've let go, I'm going to get like, oh my gosh. Weepy. Like, if that is not how I feel yeah. in sacred space, whether it's on the dance floor at my yeah. favorite club yeah. or in circle with my sisters, I mean, I just, I see my my heart like it, my my being mm-hmm, my physical body mm-hmm, opening mm-hmm. up and like and like light and energy coming out of me yeah, and darkness yeah, yeah. wrapping me and it's just wow yeah and so that sounds powerful. so I, yeah so i'm like listening to the song and and first of all they say love is the law and i'm like oh. like if i was driving it'd be like Arr! you know and then like it keeps going and they're describing this experience of like exploding and coming out of their body and i'm just like oh. <laughs> Dub vision and Afro Jack, you're speaking to this witch. <laughs> like what the what? Oh my gosh! Okay, we we're gonna have to find some of their I stuff. Love it so. so much. Yeah, yeah. You pull me up when I can't get on my feet. The sound of your voice and the rapture in your eyes. Your love is the law, and you bring. Um, I had that experience um, and and I listened to the music first and then I saw the video and the video to me was so, uh, you know, I'm sure for the artist it, it made sense, but it was not what how I was uh, uh, interacting with it. And so it was, uh, who's yours? Uh, Take me to church. Take me to church. To- oh my. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember the first time I literally, like one of my students had said, oh, you know, you know Dr. Marfa, you want to listen to this? And I said, sure okay whatever and then they um i think uh a couple of days later somehow it came up on or something i don't know and i said oh you know let me take a moment to listen that way the next time i see the student i can tell them i did listen to it i I lost my mind my head just exploded my heart literally like you said you can i i felt my my the 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 music kind of bounced around inside and was like it's got to get out it's got to get out it's got to get out and i literally flung my arms open wide because that's how full i felt of it and oh my gosh i i think i then listened to it like four more times because like if you can if one orgasm is good five is, <laughs> five is five, better <laughs> much 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 go, better go go <laughs> like, okay i feel oh! <laughs> again again again, again. <laughs> because why not oh my gosh and then i saw the video and the video is um yeah you know you so just hate crime yeah yeah it's it's yeah it's 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 kind of um it's it's very sad but um, there's another one though of him um 
uh, up to that song, it's of a, a male ballet Dancing. dancer. Yes, I saw that. That is yes. the one that I choose to believe yes. is the. It's yes. so beautiful. I, I don't He's know. Maybe, did you? Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. I I when I saw that, it's just oh my. I think it, because when you go into YouTube, they pull yeah. that up, and so that's the one I prefer. Um, because the other, I mean, I I, I want to witness that, and I want to hold the container for people who have yes. to suffer through that. Yes. Um, oh. but it it's not where that song was going for mm-hmm. me. So. But I would say, though, that song, though, it's very witchy. Like, the lyrics are very, I mean, talking about, like, sacrificing. Yes, and, yes, yes, uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's just so yeah, witchy. And what he, oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. So, uh, so yeah. Oh, my gosh. We, 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 yeah. So, I was going to say, we need to have a music episode. I guess we're, <laughs> right, we're, but we're having a music we're episode. We're right now. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> we need to have another music episode because we've got so many to talk about. So we're 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 getting close to the time where we need to be ending, and we haven't even we've just barely scratched the surface. Um, but we so appreciate you taking this journey with us, and we just like to just mention a few names of artists that we didn't get a chance to discuss. But if you get the chance to go and listen to them, we highly recommend you do that. You want to get us started? Mm-hmm. A bay, specifically river. Ooh, good. Um, I was I the Lila or Lila. I'm not sure how she pronounces her name. Rez, specifically the the album A Certain Kind of Magic. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, uh, And then um, Serena, I don't think I have, or it might be Sirena. I don't know how she pronounces. I don't know how they pronounce their names, but Serena, let's say. Last one for me would be Ellie Goulding, specific song, Mm. Ritual. Oh, my gosh. And then I'm going to end with Halsey. Um, There's tons. (laughs) She's on my list, too. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the song, but but just a, a, a lot of her stuff. She just has t- haunting. 2015 is the one I put on the list. Oh, okay. Is that the okay. one you? No, that's okay. not the one I'm thinking about. I'm thinking mine is you. It's probably like BDSM. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some kinky song. Anyway, um, <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> But uh, so there you go. Thank you so much for um, listening to our musings on mu- musings on music. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't, couldn't resist. And um, that's, we, a, that's a good note to a good note to end on. Oh. <laughs> You're so phony. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay, we'll just stop now. Um, one of the things that Leilani mentioned in our last episode was the fact that we discovered that we have listeners from all over Australia, Germany, uh, the UK, and and Canada, among other places. And uh, she sent a call out uh, that we we labeled. Where's my witch is at? Basically, just asking for you to just let us know your experiences and the way in which they might intersect with some of the topics that we've covered in our um, podcast. Anyway, we thought we'd let you get to hear from some of these listeners. And here's one intrepid respondent, Izzy. Hello, my name is Israel and I reside in New Braunfels, Texas. I'm not a practicing witch, however, I do have some pagan qualities. To be honest, I'm just a very nerdy hippie and get all my spiritual fulfillment in nature, especially under the water. Fortunately, thanks to my occupation in aquatic habitat restoration and various outside hobbies like gardening, I get to feel at one with my surroundings regularly. Quick shout out to my witchy girlfriend Setsuna for telling me about this great podcast. And if I had to pick one favorite thing about witchy wit, it's that y'all's energy is infectiously bright and upbeat. It never fails to put me in a great mood while teaching me about new witchy perspectives. I would also like to wish y'all a happy solstice, since it seems like the perfect time to record this. Thank you for all that you do. That was great. Good to hear from you, Izzy. Oh dear, what are we going to do? Okay, so we're going to end. Um, and uh, we thank you so much for joining us. And please look for us um, every second and fourth Friday of the month is when our episodes drop. If you would like to support us, uh, you can rate and review us on any of the platforms that you get your Spotify, uh, your Spotify, that you get your <laughs> podcast on. Um, and another way you can support us is finding us over on Patreon. Yes. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Bye. We hope you've enjoyed the magic that has unfolded here at Witchy Wit. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Witchy Wit Podcast. Email us at witchywit123 at gmail.com. Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Get exclusive content and support us on Patreon. Stay Stay witchy, witchy, y'all!